Yes. Welcome, Brian. Hello. So this is uh, about integrating the tickle vent loop into. Oh, it's a little bit off. <laughs> um, hopefully, you'll be able to read the rest of the slides. Sorry. So a little bit about me, um, Brian Griffin. I've been working at Mentor Graphics, which is now a Siemens business, as of two or three years ago. Um, been working on HDL simulation. Uh, I work in the area of work at debugger, um, general infrastructure um, around the different tools we have. Um, some GUI development, did a lot of GUI development years ago, much less nowadays. Uh, and I've been using Tickle since 1996, roughly. Um, I'm also a TCT member. And that uh, character is not me, but if you Google my name, that's who will pop up. <laughs> um, the division I work in supplies a number of analysis tools uh, used to analyze digital designs in the development of, the, of these designs. Um, every digital chip in the world goes through um, some set of these tools, um, either by our tools or our competitor tools and so on. Um, <clears throat> There's simulation, which is a software simulation. There's emulation, which uses hardware to accelerate the simulation. Um, we have virtual prototyping of the hardware, um, FPGA prototyping, so further down the line. Also have formal analysis tools. Um, and then there's, there's add-ons for doing verification uh, to assist with the verification applications. Um, and overall, we provide tools for stimulating the design, for managing your design data, um, doing grid runs of simulations and that sort of thing, and uh, collecting analysis data, um, and also debugging the designs when they don't work the way they're supposed to. <coughs> um, so the, the software simulator is the, the core tool. Um, a lot of these other tools and analysis tools um, surround uh, and um, this is the, the core simulator, software simulator is where I do a lot of my work. Um, and um, a few years ago, uh, we replaced our um, TK GUI um, that we layered on top of the simulator with this um, called Quest of Visualizer. Um, this technology we purchased, it's based um, on QT, and it has this very sophisticated, um, advanced um, database and analysis engines for debugging. Internally, the, uh, I'll get to that. Okay, so um, it was designed primarily for post-simulation. So after the simulation is completed, uh, you do a post-simulation debug, uh, analyzing the results. Um, you can debug the device under test itself, or you can debug the test bench, which is um, software written to stimulate the design. Um, you can do analysis of the coverage of your uh, testing. Um, there's additional third-party add-ons that, that go into here. This um, debug environment is also used not only by the software simulator, but by the other analysis tools as a common front end for debugging. Um, the problem we ran into early on is that uh, um, this QT environment um, had some limited capability uh, to support Tickle, um, simple Tickle scripts. Um, it also used Tickle internally in a few spots for communicating between different um, um, sub-pieces of the analysis tools. Um, there's also no um, general purpose way of communicating with other tools outside of the GUI. Um, they tended to use, the old code tended to use um, like system calls and uh, there's a couple other techniques that were not non-standardized and hard to use. Um, and the, the problem we uh, ran into bringing in some of our tickle tech techniques that we use with our tools is that scripts that um, use the event loop, the tickle event loop, so that means using um, the after statement, the view wait statement, um, file events, those sorts of things, update, 
um, tend to have problems. You'd either hang, knock at an event, or, uh, um, or sometimes crash, I think. And we did a lot of strange um, errors with that. Um, and the, the reason was that the, the QT event loop was completely unaware of tickle events, and the tickle event loop was completely unaware of QT events. So you call some tickle code, it schedules an event in the tickle event loop, goes back to the QT event loop, and QT event loop just sits there happily, not knowing that the timer expired and it was supposed to go do something. So the solution is very easy. All you have to do is replace the Tickle's native event loop with the QT event loop. And Tickle is designed to do this exactly this sort of thing. And so all it really takes is uh, reading the, the set notifier man page, which does an excellent job of describing exactly how to write a notifier. <coughs> implement what the man page says you need to implement. And in this case, we need to implement it using QT isms. Um, then go have a beer, and we're done, right? <laughs> Except for some of the gotchas you run into. Um, so a little background. This is a pseudo description of the tickle event loop. And if you just look at the bold parts, uh, go check to see if there's any events right now that need to be serviced. We're like, the callbacks are ready to go, and you just need to make the callbacks. Um, if not, then you um, set up the event sources for, um, for them to receive an event. Um, you call wait for an event. You wait for something to happen. Um, when something has happened, then you go check to see which event source had something happen on it. Um, you go service those events that are in the queue now. Um, if there are no events, service any idle events that might be pending, um, and repeat. Uh, now, <clears throat> since this is TCL do one event, at any point where an event is actually processed, serviced, we bail out. Okay. So that's the event loop, the tickle event loop. <clears throat> um, to set a notifier, or to implement a custom notifier, you have to implement each of these functions in the list. And so I'm going to go through the important ones here. So when you have a statement like after, um, after a second uh, call update clock, and <clears throat> that requires a set, or set timer proc to do its thing. So you need to be able to schedule the time. So what I'm doing here is comparing the um, native tickle implementation, or the important bits of the na native tickle implementation with the QT version. And the key point is that um, you create a timeout for, for the time period that tickle said, this is what we need to set the delay for. Um, and when it times out, call this timer proc. QT land, we create a QT timer, and when uh, when we get the timeout signal, call the timer proc. Um, and it looks pretty much the same. We're just using QT instead of XT. <laughs> and the timer procs are pretty similar. Um, in, in this case, it calls service, um, service all, which um, I didn't do over here, and I don't I think it's necessary. I don't know why it's calling service all directly there, but um, it's a minor detail, I think. Um, in this case, the, um, when we get the timer proc, we stop the timer, um, kill the, you know, I'll get to explaining this case here, but this is exiting the event loop, um, and that sends us back into the main event loop, which finds that the, uh, finds the correct queued um, timer event and so executes it. <clears throat> For a um, file event, when you have this kind of statement, you want to call back when the FD is readable. And that's the create file handler proc. 
that takes care of that event. Um, in the Unix, in the Tickle implementation, um, it's just adding the, the file descriptor and the callback function somewhere here. Oh, well, no. Maybe that comes later. Um, but it just adds the, the file of interest to a, a, a linked list. Um, and same thing here. We have this file handler class. Um, and we uh, create a new entry and set, uh, in this case, we're, we're setting a QT socket notifier. Uh, and the socket notifier will, can be used on sockets and pipes in QT. Um, so that goes on to the list. <clears throat> um, and then the, the set notifier call is connecting the um, QT activated signal, creates the, the socket notifier, connects the activated signal to call this file proc, which is what happens on the um, tickle side as well, tickle native. <coughs> And the file proc looks pretty similar. Um, it creates an event that gets queued on the tickle event list with the appropriate callback information. Um, the delete file handler proc, proc just cleans up the, the linked list of interesting fi interested files. Okay, the wait, wait for event proc. This is sort of the, the core of the event loop. And from the man page, um, the wait for event call only waits. It doesn't actually execute anything. Um, doesn't process the events in one way. It just waits for something interesting to happen. Later on, the events get processed when it gets back to the, the main event loop. Okay. <clears throat> so in the wait for event, um, in QT land, uh, we create a new event loop. That's the way QT does things. Um, and then these are the two calls. Uh, process events just scans through its list of, of interesting events to see if any of them um, need to be notified, need to be, um, are, are ready to process and processes them. Um, the exec call does the same thing, but it's, it, if there's nothing to process, it'll block and wait until something happens. Um, and it, to keep it from waiting forever, we set up a timer, the single shot timer in QT, um, which we'll call exit um, when the time expires. And we set the exec to, uh, to wait till some time. So this, this is a minimum of what will happen. Something very similar to this is in the uh, native tickle event loop as well. <clears throat> um, so once we have something happen, then we just return. Um, and this indicates whether there was actually some event processed or not. Uh, one subtle difference between QT and tickle is that um, these process events, exec, can potentially process multiple events in one go. Whereas Tickle will find the first thing, process that, and then st um, stop scanning the list. <laughs> so how does this work? Um, all QT applications, um, once they set everything up, will then call an exec method, which is a, the event loop exec. Um, that enters the event loop. Um, that's kind of akin to the TK main call that like wish starts up with, for example. Um, in, the, in the ticker world, to get into the event loop, you have to call TCL do one event. So TCL do one event is called by vwait and it's called by update. Um, so somewhere in the world, there has to be a vwait or an update 
to get into the event loop. Um, or from C code, you can call TCL do an event as well. Um, since we have a QT application, the QT event loop will be started first. Um, and the event, the tickle event loop may not come into play until later. So if you have the sequence of events where you user clicks on a button, it generates a QT signal, uh, which calls a function that may evaluate a tickle script. We hit a V-weight in the script, TCL do an event gets called, now we're in waiting for a tickle event. Is that clear? All right, good. Uh, so, if you notice there's a, a recursion because we started in exec, now we're in TCL do an event, we're going to enter our wait for event proc here, and it's going to call exec again. So now we've recursed into the event loop, and this is perfectly natural for event loops in general. Um, but we're creating a new event loop here, so we keep this chain, we understand the, the uh, the hierarchy, and uh, we do the exit because we don't want to do anything, we don't want to make any calls from within this event loop here. Instead, we want to get out of here, which returns us back to the tickle, main tickle event loop, which will do the service, will then service the event if there are any. If not, it'll come back down and create a new nested event loop, right? But we want to get out of, we only want to stay in here long enough until something happens, and then we get out right away. Okay, and that's what, uh, that's what my exit does, is it just calls the exit on the event loop with the status. Um, it tells you, uh, so exit tells the event loop, passes the return code back. Uh, zero means success, which means something, there was some event that happened. Um, anything that's non-zero is an error. So I'm, just to visualize again, so we're in the QT event loop until the button gets clicked, calls the function, uh, generates a signal, calls the function, um, oh, this is the no recursion case, I'm sorry. In this case, generate the, uh, the signal, call the function. It creates a file event on some file of interest and then returns. So there's no recursion in this case. The tickle event loop is not entered. Um, but in this case, there is recursion in the event loop. Okay. And uh, reiterating the QT event loop does allow recursion. It does happen where uh, signals um, will call exec, signals will call their appropriate slots. Those slots will then call exec waiting for something to happen. And some other event will fire, which will call some other slot, which will call exec again. And so it can recurse down. In practice, in my experience, I've never, I've seen event loops recurse quite often, but I've never seen them event, uh, recurse more than three or four times. Um, and if you get deadlocks, you have, the problem's not that a fax that it recurs, it's that your logic of your events and stuff is broken. <coughs> TCL also does recursion, um, same sort of thing. Um, so in, in our particular application, we're mixing QT code and tickle code, and so this recursion has to work also, going back and forth. So wait for event is designed to work recursively, um, hence the use of the local QT event loop and an exit strategy. And there's one last issue to address in this case is how do you get to tickle? Um, 
Events queued for the tickle event loop will only pr be processed when the tickle do an event is called. And QT applications are run from um, the, to the top level by calling exec, which is the entry into the QT event loop. The default exec in, uh, in the method will not call TCL do an event. Um, so how do you ever get into the tickle event loop to process the events? Um, it's never called, then the, event, the tickle events will never get processed. To solve this, um, what we do is just overload the exec method um, to call TCL do one event instead. And the TCL do one event will in turn call it TUT's event loop. And so our, our own main application exec call looks like this. Just until you're ready to exit, just keep calling TCL do an event. And then that in turn uh, spins the QT event loop and everything just runs normally. Uh, the interest, the one thing I find interesting is this QT itself doesn't allow any easy way to do this um, directly. But since you can overload the method, um, that kind of works. <coughs> Did we forget anything? Uh, these, these other, other things, uh, other functions. So the, uh, the init notifier proc is just the one, is a function that initializes the notifier state uh, and calls the, the TCL set notifier function. Uh, service mode hook um, it's for saving and restoring the mode when it gets changed temporarily uh, the alert notifier is for the async mark handling I believe um, and finalized notifiers for cleaning up when you're shutting down the uh, interpreter um, or the application um, it turns out that these four if you, or the, uh, the last three, I mean, um, if you just leave them empty, the default behavior within Tickle is all you need. It's sufficient. Um, just two weeks ago, um, we've been building up more and more features within the, the GUI, uh, and we got to a situation where, um, so we've been, pulling code, tickle code, from our old GUI. Um, it, and it's, it's not the TK side, it's the piece of, tick, it's the, the body of tickle code that interacts with other tools, primarily the simulator, um, but with other tools too. And we've been able to just drop that in and it just kind of works um, for the most part. But just a couple weeks ago, we got to this configuration where um, the GUI is the main uh, puppeteer in this whole scenario. Um, but we have an RPC mechanism that's, yeah, um, <laughs> an RPC mechanism that's pure Tickle, so it's, it's using Tickle APIs and sockets, and it, it allows a Tickle script to call a function, a Tickle proc, that is actually implemented in the other process, and it transparently passes the call and the return value back and forth. Um, We've been using this for 20 years now, and it's um, a rock solid piece of code. Dropped it in here, and it just works. The, so the, in this case scenario, the GUI is talking to the simulator. Um, the GUI is also talking to a, um, a data server. Um, does, there's some analysis engines in there. Um, the QT GUI is also using uh, QT signals I think it's using QT signals to talk to the server in some specific cases. And um, what popped up is that the server wanted to talk to the simulator directly. Um, and so we just put another RPC channel in there and uh, that just worked. And then um, we had this bad guy, which is talking using a pipe, command pipe. And um, this is actually GDB. And it's P-tracing this guy. And so there's 
quite a complex dance that goes on between us. And um, amazingly enough, it just, after getting up over a couple little hiccups in the original implementation, it just started to work. Um, and um, it was passing tests last I heard, all the regression tests, which was pretty exciting. Um, this could not possibly work handling all the events that's going on between all these characters, all these actors in here, without the, the, uh, the QT and Tickle event loops handling their, both their events simultaneously as needed. All right, any questions? All right, hit the microphone. <laughs> On one of your slides, there was, uh, I think, a static variable called current event loop. What was the purpose? It was on the slide with the recursion. Oh. Yes. The, um, what was the purpose of the static remembered uh, current working event loop? Yeah, I know what that was. So, um, like the, the timer and file notifier, they have initial callbacks as, um, so when, when the timer expires, it's the QT code is going to make a callback, um, and that callback has to cancel, or has to notify the, the wait for event, or notify the event loop that, okay, the timer's expired, you need to go do something. So, it's not, at the timer event is not going to do any work. But what it does do is it it's, um, exits the current event loop. It tells the current event loop, stop waiting. Okay, you don't have to wait anymore. And it exits that event loop, pops up to the main event loop that goes to see, well, who has an event to process? And so then it needs to know what the current event loop is okay. at that point. Any more questions? All right. Doesn't seem so. Thanks, Thank Brian. You.